Prior to virtualizing domain controllers, there are some key steps that you want to take in order to best prepare a virtualized environment, especially a virtual machine, to be a domain controller. In this video, we're going to look at these best practices. So first and foremost, we will get into building the machines later, but you want to just build brand new virtual machines within the virtualized environment as DCs. Now, instead of migrating those physical machines over, okay, I find that to be the best practice. Now realize if I want to reuse those domain uh, controller names, I can go ahead and temporarily build virtualized machines at, you know, for Active Directory and then bring everything over, you know, gracefully shut down Active Directory on the physical machines and then, you know, rename those machines, not rename the domain controllers, that's never a good idea, but bring up the original names and then shut down the temporary names that I created. So there's some things we wanna do because time is a huge issue. Now, if you've ever managed Active Directory, you know that the time server is key. And as we look to build our Active Directory infrastructure, we're gonna make sure that we have time services down solid as we build domain controllers, okay? But because time is an issue, time between the virtualized machine and the actual domain controller itself can be a challenge. So in this case, what we're going to do is make sure that we turn off things that can affect time and the synchronization between domain controllers. So for example, turning off checkpoints, we wanna make sure that our machine never gets put into an old version of the machine. Checkpoints, of course, when they're saved, there's a log of changes that have been made. And if we bring up an old domain controller, we can really negatively affect our Active Directory infrastructure when changes that have already been made are asked to be made again. Okay, now if you're familiar with sequence numbers, the challenge there is that suddenly, we're back on old sequence numbers that are being asked to run and that can negatively affect if not take down Active Directory. We want to disable the Hyper-V time synchronization. We don't want Hyper-V managing the time for the ghost for the virtual machines. We're actually going to go in and configure time server on the virtual machine, on the domain controllers, make sure that they're synchronizing so that they have the proper time. So we'll turn off Hyper-V time synchronization. We'll set up start and stop actions. Again, we want to make sure that our Active Directory machines, just like all virtual machines, gracefully are given the opportunity to shut down. So it's very important to have battery backups with enough time to gracefully shut down the virtual machines and then shut down the physical host environment. We're going to look at how to do that. We're going to look at how to automatically start those up. We don't want, again, any save states, so that's why we're turning off that checkpoint so we don't go back to an old checkpoint. And then also, we're gonna make sure that the machine shuts off and that it's not just put into a saved state so that we, again, don't end up with issues with synchronization and upgrading act, updating Active Directory. Disk options, I just wanna point out that it is sort of best practice to have the opportunity to have physical disks. You know, if we're talking about issues with SMB3, which can be a challenge to virtualized domain controllers, um, putting these on a NAS can be a challenge, can run into issues. So, you know, sort of for the simplified environment, if you have the ability to have fast disks within the physical host, go ahead and use those. There's also the fact that in the old days, you know, this is still up for debate. How will you go about creating um, disks for Active Directory? Now, back in the day, because of read writes on SATA drives, it was recommended that you create a separate disk array for the Active Directory database and everything related to Active Directory. That still holds true if you're talking about a humongous Active Directory infrastructure. But for most businesses, I would suggest sticking with solid state drives 
and a single drive. Just do the C drive, put stuff on there. If you really want to segment out when you build your virtual machine, go ahead and build a second virtual hard disk. If it can be on a separate physical drive, even better, you'll get better performance for sure. And then finally, make sure you join the physical server uh, as it pertains to getting that same time, etc., to the domain. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we do some of these things, okay? Starting with checkpoints. If you notice here, I've gone ahead and used my master disk image to create two soon to be domain controllers. Now, before I start those up the first time, I'm gonna go in and configure those settings that we were just talking about. So the first thing I'm gonna do is turn off checkpoints. I'm gonna come down here and turn off the checkpoints so that again, I won't have any checkpoints. There won't be an opportunity for me to accidentally fire this machine up in an old state. Uh, disable Hyper-V time synchronization, so in integration services, I'm gonna go ahead and disable time synchronization. Now, as we look to do start and stop, we're gonna wanna make sure that in our integration services that we have operating system shut down right there, okay? So we're gonna do that. So let's go ahead and look at start options. Now for start options, we want to always start the virtual machine automatically, okay? Um, you know, notice when the service starts, we wanna just go ahead and say, go ahead, start it up automatically. If you want a quick delay, you can, I suggest no delay. On the automatic stop action, we wanna go ahead and shut down the guest operating system. This right here, this virtual machine, would be the guest operating system on my physical server. So I wanna go ahead and shut that down before I shut down the server. So if I'm doing updates to the server, I'm just making sure that before it restarts the physical server, that all of my virtual machines are gonna gracefully shut down. So I do this for all of my virtual machines um, that I'm running. So. So there we are, again, disk options if we wanted to, we could come in here, we could create a secondary hard drive, virtual hard disk for the active directory. I'm gonna go ahead and install it on the one root. All right, so that's it for this video. At this point, we're ready to start uh, configuring our Windows servers as domain controllers. Take care.